what next in relation to Clement's Mud Agriculture. Um, I was chairing, we had a wonderful presentation from Sonia, Gary and John uh, on their different perspectives of the issue and, and uh, detailing what their organisations are doing around Climate Smart Agriculture. Um, and we had a very interesting conversation, so thank you to all of the participants in the group. Um, I did promise that when I get things wrong, I would invite you to correct me, so please do so. Um, we, our first task was key messages from the group. Um, and these in particular, I would welcome some comments from, from group members because we put these together at the end of the session. But what, it, what I tried to do is sort of characterize some of the discussion that we had around the issues. And um, some of it is my language, not necessarily what actually was said, but I was trying to encapsulate what was said. So the first point that was made by a number of our colleagues was put farmers first. Um, this is building on what David Nabarro was starting to talk about on yesterday, only yesterday, feels like a couple of days ago, in terms of putting people first. Uh, we had a number of contributions, Frank, I think, from Irish Aid and others, Ishmael talking about the, the centrality of farmers. Let's not uh, lapse into uh, demand-driven initiatives. Let's ensure that, uh, that we are focused on, on what is actually needed on the ground. So put farmers first was the way I characterized that. We also talked about the importance of mainstreaming uh, climate change across the platform working groups or the platform initiatives. A number of the conversations we had were related to discussions that were happening elsewhere in other working groups. So the importance of working with the private sector, um, and a number of other issues that, that we felt it was really important that we didn't have these conversations in isolation. And one of the themes for us throughout these couple of days has been the point about integration. So, at very least, we need to make sure that we don't uh, grow, enable silos to grow within the platform. We're talking about avoiding silos elsewhere. We need to make sure we avoid that inside the platform as well. And building on that point, uh, we talked about the need to expand the dots. Again, it's kind of my language, a slightly succinct version of John's much more eloquent description about the interconnectivity of the issues that, with which we deal. So again, a focus on integration, but when we're thinking about Climate Smart Agriculture, ensuring that we are also connecting that conversation and that policy work to the broader debate that's happening around food security, the broader debate that's happening around energy security, and particularly this, this question of energy security, we felt had been left out of our conversation. So we recognize additional complexity and in integration, but we also think that it's a critical part of our work. Um, so we thought it was important to, to think beyond the climate change conversation. We've done quite a bit of work in the agriculture and climate change group in the past um, on focusing on the UNFCCC work. It was, a, again, a, a feeling that that's not the only global game in town. Um, if we want to be involved in global engagement, we should think beyond it. The reference was made on a number of occasions to Rio Plus 20 as, uh, and other global fora in which we might want to engage. Um, and uh, so the question about global engagement, we had a lot of discussion about the fact that we need to have both global engagement, or if we have global engagement, we also need to have a very firm focus on action on the ground. That as practitioners, technicians, we need very much to focus on what we can do differently, what we can do better around this issue, uh, which would complement the work that ha happens in a, in a global, in global forum. So I know we're supposed to have three key messages, Sam, I'm sorry, but we've got four. We could probably collapse them to three if we tried home. Um, so what can platform members do in the next year to support climate smart agriculture? What we think is the most useful thing we could do is to create and nurture a community of policy and practice. Uh, most of our conversation came around the importance of sharing information on what we're doing, ensuring, trying to avoid duplication. So in terms of probably the primary focus, it, it, it would be on, on building a community of practice around this issue or expanding the nascent community of practice that exists. Um, as a possibility, we thought that it might be useful to, to explore the possibility of commissioning a platform policy brief or an issues paper around this question of integration more broadly. So building on that, the, the joining the dots conversation, uh, do we, are we sufficiently looking at agriculture in the context of sustainable development? Uh, are there broader uh, approaches that we should be taking. That could be commissioning a report, it could be uh, synthesizing existing papers on that issue, but, but potentially there's a, there's a need for a, a piece that addresses that question. Um, 
we also thought that it would be extremely useful for the, for the platform to host a workshop, either virtual or face-to-face, -face, around the forthcoming uh, Climate Smart Agriculture source book that FAO and ourselves are producing, and, and many others are engaged in that process, and also related tools. Uh, Gary Smith's presentation from FAO was, was focused on the, the work that uh, FAO is doing on Climate Smart Agriculture, and particularly the source book which is being developed. It's a very substantial piece of work on providing uh, information and resources for, for practitioners in the field. That work is currently taking place. Um, my understanding is that Gary felt it would be possible to, for FAO to work with a platform to host a workshop during 2012 on that. And the other part, the, the other part of uh, Gary's presentation that people responded to very much is, is the existing the tools that, that FAO is working on in terms of helping practitioners assess the climate impact of various agricultural programs. So there's a whole range of tools that Gary presented, um, and some others among the group are also developing tools. So. And we think there's real value in sharing that information, uh, testing some of those tools to assist our program. Samantha's looking anxious, I'll move quickly. So, um, and then what, what, at a slightly more detailed level, what could we actually do to support knowledge sharing? What we, would, what we were thinking about was building essentially a sub-site within the, on the platform site, um, a one-stop shop uh, around Climate Smart Agriculture. Uh, we, as members of that group, committed to sharing our existing, and this is not producing more, but sharing existing strategies, reports, analysis around the issue, um, and having a, a subsection within that site around um, a toolkit of um, a, listing the tools, existing and pipeline tools, on climate-related assessments and methodologies. And we also wanted to pick up the point about interactivity from this morning, and we, we talked about the need to establish a Yammer or one of those just-in-time communication tools to enable us to both uh, make suggestions and ask questions of each other. So these are all things that we as a community, would, we believe as a community would, would support our work as practitioners and would, would help building the community of practice. So Pascal luckily was in our group and um, told us this is manageable and possible and it would require the facilitation of the Secretariat but uh, a great deal of engagement from us. That's the essence of the conversation, although it was much broader and more interesting than I was able to encapsulate. Do we have time for anybody else to make any points or later? Yeah. Any? Okay. Does anything I missed from the group you'd particularly like to add to? Okay. That's it then. Thank you very much. Thank you.